The AWOL Vision LTV 3500 gets its name from the incredible brightness it puts out. No less than 3500 ANSI lumens, making this ultra short throw laser projector the brightest tri chroma model on the market and perfectly suitable for daytime use as you can see. With otherwise incredible triple laser 4K HDR 10 plus picture quality, is it worth a $5,000 punt on a somewhat unknown company? Let's find out in today's review. Okay, so let's talk about some specs first. As I mentioned, it runs at a crisp 4K via a Texas Instruments 0.47 inch 4K DMD chip at a maximum brightness of 3500 ANSI lumens. It supports HDR10, 10, 10 Plus, and Dolby Vision, and it also features a 17 millisecond game mode, which, as far as projectors go, is incredible. It weighs 27 pounds or 12.25 kilograms and measures 23.6 by 14 by 5.7 inches or 60 by 35 by 15 centimeters. It also features a 3000 to 1 contrast ratio, and as mentioned, this is a tri chroma projector, meaning it uses an individual laser for red, blue, and green, giving a much more vibrant and distinct color gamut compared to a single laser projector, uh, which uses a phosphor wheel to produce the different colors. This covers 107% of the REC 2020 color space, 149% of the DCI-P3, and it has 3D support for side-by-side, top-bottom, and frame pack movies, as well as a handful of other formats too. And that's compatible with DLP Link Active Shutter glasses, of which a few pairs were supplied for testing. You've got a 0.25 to 1 projection ratio, meaning that to get a 120 inch image like we have here, you need to place the projector 13.6 inches away from the screen. As for design, it's somewhat unique, but gives me this sort of big black Xbox type of vibes with these curved sides and mesh grille. It's a fairly generic color scheme of dark gray, black, and this gold line. It's functional, but I can't say I like the overall aesthetic. It feels like a hodgepodge mismatch of elements. But you're not buying a laser projector for how it looks, so who cares what I think about that. In terms of inputs, we have three total HDMI 2.0B ports, though you'll only find two around the back. The other is hidden away behind this panel, so you can put a streaming stick in there and it'll be effectively hidden away. There's a USB port on the back as well as one on the side. I used one of these for a USB stick of sample 3D movies they provided, which you can access the files of using the inbuilt OS. And then I used the other one to activate the projector screen. More on that later. You'll also find an SPDIF digital output, composite in and LAN connection. But of course it also supports Wi-Fi. Out of the box impressions were good. Incredible brightness despite being daytime, though it wasn't automatically focused right, so I needed to dip into the settings and manually focus it. Now, rather than using Google TV like most laser TVs, AWOL Vision has opted for a customized version of Android 9.0, running natively on the projector itself. But they also provide a full Amazon Fire TV 4K Max stick in the box, so you can use that for all your streaming needs. Of course, you could swap that out for your own Google Chromecast or Roku stick or what have you, but since this was provided, I've mostly been testing with this. I also note that you can change the default device, so you don't need to boot into the built-in OS every time. You can select the input you want. Uh, you can go straight to your AV receiver or your Fire Stick, etc. Unfortunately, if you don't have the Fire TV app on your phone and you're not in that ecosystem, uh, then setting this up is tedious because you'll need to do the whole Wi-Fi connection thing uh, from the remote, unlike Google TV, where the chances are you already have a Google account on your Android phone and you're already signed into that. And while we're on the subject, I'll note that the remote provided with the AWOL LTV 3500 is quite premium feeling with a metal front and a sort of patterned design on the back. It feels good. But of course, the Fire TV stick comes with its own remote and then you have two. And of course, while some of the buttons are passed across with CEC, enabling you to use either. Not all of them are, and it can be a get bit confusing. For instance, clicking home while navigating the Fire TV stick takes you back to the main projector home rather than home on the Fire TV. Instead, to get back to that, you have to click back, 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 and then confirm when a dialog box comes up asking you if you want to leave the current app. It's certainly messier than just having Google TV natively running on the projector, but ultimately you're probably pairing this with an AV receiver anyway, so it doesn't really matter. 
So I started testing the LTV3500 by projecting onto my chalk painted white wall, which is until now how I've always used a projector. I find it offers a very cheap way of getting a massive projection surface that's reasonably good with no resulting hot spots. Yes, black levels do suffer on a white background. Obviously you can't project black, it's the absence of light. But I tend to only watch in the evenings, we're not big daytime TV watchers, so that's never been a huge issue for me. Ultimately, uh, any amount of light, even from the projector itself, is going to make blacks appear grey if you're projecting onto white though. So AWOL Vision were also kind enough to send a 120 inch floor rise screen as well to test this with, and I'll talk about that too. Uh, I'll be showing some direct comparisons between the two, which you can sort of see here, to help you make your own mind up because there are compromises to be made. And I'll tell you, maneuvering this into our home was quite awkward. The biggest consideration though is that this screen costs almost as much as a lesser laser projector at around $1,500 to $2,000. This is the 120 inch Vividstorm ALR Rise Up model. ALR means ambient light rejection, and as it suggests, it's designed to minimize reflections from other light sources, only reflecting back that which comes from the projector. So you should get a purer image with no hot spots. You can sort of see that here. You can see how the light changes, and you can't really see it from the side. And because it's a darker gray surface, you get deeper black levels. The gain of the surface, meanwhile, 0.6 dB means you lose a little light in the process, but very small amount in exchange for what AWOL Vision says is an 80% increase in picture quality. I'm not sure how they got such a specific number for something I would say is entirely subjective, but it does look amazing. The reason for having an ALR screen is mainly for daytime viewing. As you can see at the moment, if you've ever tried to use a projector in the daytime at this sort of massive screen size, you'll know it's really unsatisfying. But with this combination of 3500 lumen projector and ALR screen, it's perfectly feasible to actually watch in the daytime. So if that's an essential feature for you, then you will need to budget a bit more to get a bundle with an ALR screen to go with your purchase. And frankly, if you're spending this much on a projector, then it's well worth the added investment. But otherwise, for nighttime use only, I don't think it's worth the added cost. If you have a large white wall, grab a $40 pot of chalk paint, and then the upside of doing that is that you can get a much larger image as well. Now, one really neat feature I wanted to mention with the AWOL Vision screen is the inclusion of a USB stick remote control. And this is quite genius. It plugs into the USB port on your LTV 3500, and when it detects the USB uh, power output, it'll automatically rise the screen up. And when the power is cut, so you've turned the projector off, it'll bring the screen back down again. Very clever and avoids having to use the uh, screen remote uh, other than initially setting the right height. Now in terms of actual image quality, when combined with the screen it is absolutely stunning. Definitely the brightest and best looking image out of the box I have ever tested. They are good black levels, the colours are vibrant but not overblown. There's no noise in the image, it's a visual delight in every sense, and home movie nights are taken to a whole other level. If you want ultra smooth action, you can enable MEMC and it works well to smooth things out, but I'm not a fan of that personally. Now, when it comes to picture adjustments, one thing I really did like is that the interface on the projector itself is snappy and responsive. One of the frustrating aspects of laser TVs that have Google TV built in is that I find the menus to be annoyingly complex and quite slow to navigate. Google TV itself, the main interface is usually fine, but the settings when integrated with Google TV tend to not be. On this, the menu overlay works outside of your streaming stick or whatever your input is, and consequently, it's a lot snappier. So that makes it easier to adjust the image to your preference. And there are a lot of adjustments you can make with full RGB tweaking possible. There's also various SDR and HDR color modes, so it's always worth playing around with until you find one you like. For the most part, I thought the auto modes out of the box were brilliant, but you do have the option to tweak that uh, from three or four different options in case you find that, say, the shadows are blown out in daytime viewing, that sort of thing. That said, the menu system can be a bit weird and confusing. It's not entirely clear why some settings are under an image submenu, for instance, while others are under the light submenu when they seem to relate to the image. But it's not a huge deal. 
Now, some of you will also really appreciate the full 3D support. It's very easy to enable. It takes any 3D source in side-by-side, -side, top, bottom, frame pack, line interface, or alternative frame format. So it just works. It's compatible with anything. Now, for those of you new to 3D viewing, uh, Active Shutter 3D does come with a slightly degraded picture quality. You have to wear special glasses as well, which are slightly tinted. Um, it's just the nature of how it works. It's inherent to the technology. But this is certainly one of the best implementations I've tried, no doubt, thanks to the higher overall brightness. In truth, I did used to be big into 3D movies, but I must admit, since the advent of VR, that sort of replaced it for me. I don't see such a huge attraction there anymore, but I know you guys are out there, and if you do still enjoy uh, the handful of 3D Blu-rays that get released every month, or have a collection already that you want to keep enjoying, uh, while also being able to enjoy more modern 4K HDR releases on the big screen with the family all together, then this is certainly a brilliant way to watch. So on to gaming performance. The LTV 3500 boasts a claimed 17 milliseconds lag in 4K 60 uh, HDR turbo mode, or as low as 8 milliseconds if you can bear dropping to 1080p. That's fantastic by any measure, and very unusual for projectors in general, never mind laser projectors, so that's very impressive. I tried a variety of games on this, shooters, Call of Duty type thing, twitchy Lego brawls, cyberpunk, and some racing, and it all played like a dream. It is a truly unparalleled gaming experience if you can drive that 4K60 from your gaming PC, or if you have a next-gen console. It's just incredible, and I had no issues gaming on this, but Hardcore shooters may still be picky about even 17 milliseconds. I'm not personally because my internet is horrendous anyway. The 17 milliseconds is a fraction of my overall lag. So on to sound then. In my cinema here, I actually have a 7.1 surround system and bass shaker on the sofa. But for the purposes of testing, I've left that off and used only the audio uh, from this for testing the streaming stick, built-in OS, that sort of thing. Now it does feature HDMI arc to transmit audio back into the amplifier, but that's only going to be used for the built-in OS, which you probably won't use. If you do have an AV receiver, after all, you would have the Fire TV stick plugged into that, or your Google TV, whatever it is that you're using. Uh, to avoid any of the typical lag you can sometimes get over HDMI arc. But that out of the way, the built-in audio from the 36 watt speakers is not fantastic. I would go so far as to say it's a bit disappointing. It can get really loud, but it lacks any clarity at all with overly boosted mid-ranges, and it's completely lacking in bass and high-end. It's a little too muddy to me, and it can feel like the projector case itself is sort of rattling around. Now, this is disappointing on one level compared to, say, the XGME Aura, which I reviewed before, which has an incredible quality soundbar just built into it. This doesn't, and on something this expensive, you might expect better. It's acceptable for watching a bit of light TV, but I definitely would not want to game on it or watch full-length movies. Not a chance. Does it really matter, though? Probably not, because if you're spending six to seven thousand or more on this bundle with the screen, then you can afford a thousand dollars for our half-decent 5.1 or 7.1 surround system. And ultimately, you are never going to replicate the experience of actual surround sound with any virtualized technology. And this does include a Dolby X virtual surround mode, but even if they had put a fantastic soundbar on this, I would still be recommending that you not use it for the best movie experience. I mean, what a shame to have such an amazing projector and then just use one central sound source. Also on the topic of sound, the noise level from the projector itself is, well, inaudible. It certainly isn't going to interrupt your movie watching in any way, uh, so I didn't bother actually measuring it. It's so low, it doesn't matter. So should you buy the AWOL Vision LTV 3500? The LTV 3500 and ALR Vividstorm screen is an incredible combination for the ultimate in entertainment experiences, whether that's 4K HDR movies, TV shows, or gaming. The extremely high maximum brightness plus the ambient light rejection means daytime usage is just not a problem. So if that's high on your list of requirements, this projector absolutely ticks all of the boxes as well as just producing an incredible image. That said, it is a pricey combination at six to seven thousand dollars for the screen and projector, especially for a relatively new brand that few people will have heard of. It is fantastic quality, no doubt, 
But if you're not going to use your laser TV in the daytime, you just want it for nighttime movie watching or gaming, perhaps you have a way to block out all the light anyway with blackout curtains or your cinemas in the basement, then you can save a lot of money on a cheaper model. In fact, AWOL Vision offers a much cheaper 2500 lumen model that's otherwise exactly the same as this, uh, but for closer to $3,500 without the screen. So you really are paying a fair premium for that added brightness and you should consider if you need it before buying. Also, think about how large you actually want to project or can project. Your space is what's going to limit you here. The truth is that if you can only project 80 to 100 inch screen, there's really no point in getting a projector. An 85 inch TV would be a much better purchase and they're relatively cost effective nowadays. That's it from me anyway. Thank you to AWOL Vision for shooting this over for review and I'm excited to see what they come up with next. Until next time, thank you for watching. Hit me up in the comments with any questions, suggestions, or other feedback, something you want me to try perhaps, and I'll get back to you. I'm James Bruce. You've been watching MakeUseOf.com Reviews.